Hello, Earthlings, and welcome to the second part of a Double Trouble sound mine thing. In this episode, I'm actually going to be talking about the song itself that I posted on Thursday, Twilight and Starburn. As you know from watching the live version, link in the description and also on the end screen, or from reading the description of the piano version I posted earlier, also a link in the description and on the end screen to that. The lyrics came from the poem that Tom Morello wrote the day after Chris Cornell died. So in this video, I'm going to be just talking about my process about turning that poem into a song. So first what I did is I looked at the poem and I saw that one line was repeated and I went, there's the title, Twilight and Star Burn. And I wanted to sing that line to the same melody each time. So because it was the second line of the poem, I copied the poem into Word and added a stanza break so that it would be also the second line of the second stanza. I realized at this point that the two stanzas were both eight lines long, so I divided them further into four line stanzas, your standard length when writing lyrics. When I wrote the song, I was only intensely familiar with two Chris Cornell songs, Hunger Strike and Black Hole Sun. And seeing as Hunger Strike, in fact the entire Temple of the Dog project, was conceived in memory of Andrew Wood, Hunger Strike seemed an obvious candidate to keep in mind as I wrote the music. I'm at the piano, by the way. It's down there. And the initial chord progression I came up with was this. So the verses wouldn't become too rigid, bound by the repeated chord progression, I decided to modulate up a minor third in the middle from F to A flat. This is just an easy way to make your song seem more passionate, go up a minor third. And it's really easy to carry out that modulation because of how closely related the keys are, because the parallel minor of one, i.e. the same tonic, is the relative minor of the other i.e. the same scale, the same set of chords, but a different tonic. So they both have F minor in common. There's F, there's F minor, and there's A flat. And it's really easy to modulate from F to A flat. It's like, okay, we're in F. And to get back to F for the second verse, I used a chord that's kind of like the dominant, the subdominant minor. It acts like the dominant in that it pulls towards the tonic, but it's much sadder. So instead of doing this, I did this. It tugs at your heartstrings a bit more and, you know, fits the mood of the song. It comes up in like every other sad song. How many times have you heard that? The fact that the subdominant minor acts like a, a dominant chord but from the opposite direction because it falls instead of rising and it's sad instead of happy. This is the whole basic concept of Jacob Collier's negative harmony concept that he has recently popularized. So to get from A flat back to F, I just did a subdominant minor cadence in A flat and then a subdominant minor cadence in F. unintended consequence of that sequence of chords that I love is that you don't actually hear the modulation because so many of those chords belong to both keys. You don't hear the key change at any one specific point. It doesn't even sound to me like the key has changed. I, I only know so because I wrote it. One of my favorite surreptitious modulations as of recent is in Stranger Be Forgotten by Temples where they modulate from C to E flat so it's the same distance between the keys but they use so many borrowed chords in C that you don't really realize that they've changed a key when they hit the dominant of E flat. It's like we're in C, they're 
there's that subdominant minor again. I do that a few times. Maybe we're not in C anymore. Okay, we're definitely in E flat. You and I by Stevie Wonder uses a similar modulation down a minor third that you don't really hear at the time it happens because it uses so many related chords, so many common chords between both keys. But back to Twilight and Starburn, as for the melody, it pretty much came from simply singing the words to the chords. The one bit of the melody I consciously crafted was at the last two lines, maybe no one has ever known you, you are Twilight and Starburn and Shade. The former of those two is both the climax of the poem and the only line not to begin with the word you or some variation of you. So I made sure that phrase had the highest note in the whole melody, a high G. Well, high for me at least. Maybe no. Then on the last line, I used an old trick I learned from watching a video of Jimmy Kachulis, who's a songwriting professor at Berkeley, talking about writing to a riff. And basically, what that trick is, is you match the melody to the accompaniment. Like an obvious recent example is Do I Wanna Know by the Arctic Monkeys, where suddenly in the chorus they're singing to the guitar line. This is a more subtle version of that, where at the end of the first verse, there's this inner line in the piano bit that goes... So at the end of the second verse, I just went Twilight and Starburn. After that, the progression changes to something more in the vein of Black Hole Sun. There's a big crescendo as the band comes in in the Jazz Camp West version. And uh, the quote of the Black Hole Sun ending at the end of that version. <laughs> is something I just added on the day of the performance when we were rehearsing. A slightly spontaneous addition to it, but it was kind of a little reminder that the song was still about Chris Cornell. And that is all I have to say on the song thus far. On Wednesday, I will begin my long talked about series of videos from my final recital at Berkeley and then I'll be talking about them every Friday after posting them on Wednesday. So until next time, gefaba.